everyone, welcome to Bargain Gaming, where we can play excellent games without busting our wallets. This is episode 82 of Outer Worlds. So Phineas sent me, he needs the location of the chemicals. I knew it was only a matter of time before he came a knocking. Look, I might be late, but I fulfill my contracts always. Oh, you do, do you? I have lost track of the number of beers you owe me for chasing raptodons off your stoop. Careful, I know that line. I use it all the time. I take offense to that. Look, okay. Just, it might take me a while this time. Why is that? I am awaiting but a single incoming transmission containing the information we desire. But MSI and the Iconoclasts are clogging the airwaves from Stellar Bay and Amber Heights. In their war against each other, they're scrambling each other's outgoing transmissions. Uh... The bandwidth. There's too much blasted background noise. Nothing gets through but their local broadcasts. Which, of course, has inadvertently affected the incoming port and my livelihood. Uh, can't we out... Uh, cut them off from inside the station? Uh... Graham and his iconoclast believe anarchy is the way of life. Sanjar opposes it as he's taking strides to corporatize Stellar Bay. Uh, okay. Uh. No, they're jamming the limited frequencies we have at our disposal. Nothing extra planetary can get in or out until the frequency pollution thins out. The safest bet is to convince Graham and Sanjar to stop transmitting on their end. Huh. Uh, I'll talk some sense. Four in uh, Stellar Bay. My former partner, Sanjar, transmits from his office in MSI's headquarters in the center of town. Don't let him try to fool you. While his messages might seem like gibberish, they are in reality coded business orders to off world companies. I understand why he needs the bandwidth, but we had a deal, and he's broadcasting ceaselessly. Uh-huh. Amber Heights is one of the only surviving settlements outside of Stellar Bay. Graham Bryant and the Iconoclast there got their hands on a working relay station. Now they're ceaselessly transmitting philosophist ramblings on my airwaves. Uh-huh. I could just kill them all. <laughs> you do that, I'll be here waiting on the receiving end. Luck be with you. I have a feeling you'll be needing a pinch of it, plus a vat of patience. Uh... Is that a trick question? Because to answer it, you'd need to pay me. Of course, okay. I could offer you a vastly more interesting bit of data instead. Try me. Ask me anything you'd like. I'll even offer it for free. Ooh. We'll call it an exchange for your help with the broadcast. Ask me what you will. Okay, uh, let's talk about the board. I'm curious about MSI and Phineas. Oh, what can you tell me about Phineas? Let's talk about the board. Uh, huh, I'm curious about MSI and Iconoclast. No, we received it. Have you received any broadcasts from Earth? Let's talk about the board. Yeah. Not much, admittedly. Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Neoka first, who I use as a physical go-between. The rest is history. As far as what's between us, I mean. Outside of that, well, that's a raptodon of another color. I'm listening. I do know this much. There is a sharper side to the good scientist than you'd expect. If allegations are to be believed, the experiments he conducts for the greater good are in fact treasonous and for self-gain. I am not convinced as to the validity of these allegations, considering the source, but I am also not unconvinced either.
Phineas has been in hiding for the past 35 years. He got in touch with Nioka first. As far as what's between... Not juicy enough for you. How about this, then? There is a sharper side to the goods. I am not convinced. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. What? No. Why would I go out of my way to intercept messages from Earth? There's no market for them. No buyer means it's not worth my time. Now, if you wanted me to intercept a certain one, that might be worth it for the right price. There are so many members. Do specify. If you try to cite me on this, I will deny, deny, deny. Do you understand? What I am about to reveal is the sort of information that gets a body disappeared. MSI's ownership of Monarch is technically legal, but it would give MSI too much power on the board to grant them such status. What do you say? That the chairman is politically motivated to keep Monarch from being re-recognized as a legal part of the colony, and his actions as a result are highly illegal. And that is all you will get from me regarding such a deadly piece of data. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. Uh... They are a curious lot. Insufferable. And short-sighted, too. What else do you wish to know? <laughs> Sanjar is not actually at fault for his past performance reviews. But he can keep hunting for loopholes to get back on the board for the next century. He'll never be reinstated. Not in his lifetime. For Nebula's sake, even with the loophole I gave him, he's only in charge of MSI because every other exec died during the massacre at Amber Heights. I gave Sanjar and Graham legal information that would allow MSI to own Terra One once the other corporations had abandoned the planet. The execs had their concerns, but before the matter could be resolved, pirates raided their homes in the night. <sighs> Some say Graham suffers from nightmares that leave him sweat drenched and screaming. I would assume it stems from the friends and family he lost in Amber Heights all those years ago. You mean between MSI, the Iconoclasts, and myself? I bet neither of those megalomaniacs told you I was the true mastermind behind Monarch. Back when the colony was still Terra One and corporations were abandoning us left and right, I'm the one who approached Sanjar and Graham with the means to our salvation. I offered them a legal way to take control of the planet. If MSI were the only corporation here, they could claim sole ownership. So, MSI would have to stay behind while the other corporations left. Precisely. The other corporations were fleeing because of the hazard clause declaring Terra-1 uninhabitable. But MSI had lagged behind, giving Sanjar and Graham an opportunity. Take over MSI, stay here while the other corps left, take over the planet. Precisely. Without me, they never would have done more than play revolution in hushed whispers over scuzzy kale ales in the tavern. Thus, the bargain was struck. They could run MSI while I would operate Devil's Peak Station. Unfortunately, relations have soured over time. Why did the partnership fall apart? Competing ideologies. Graham believes Sanjar has become corrupted by the corporate lifestyle. That he is now similar to the original corporate executives they sought to reform. And Sanjar has learned the hard way that Graham is quite morally gray. <laughs> okay. Luckily for you, I am a veritable font of information. That's some really good background on uh, what's going on. How low you seemingly regard my trade. 
I may have a secret for you, for the right exchange. Uh... How low you seemingly regard my trade. Okay, okay, enough, enough. I need to talk. Head up, leave. Be a doll and shoot any marauders you spot on the way down. Okay, so we have... Okay, now what are we supposed to do? Okay, uh... Search the outpost. Uh, <clears throat> Star Cross search. Uh, Rebecca and Anders were hired to clear out infestation out of an expansion site for Edgewater. That Spacer's Choice abandoned in Emerald Vale. Head there with Nioka and see if you can still there alive. Uh, don't bite the sun. No, we can't do that yet. The okay, we can't go there yet. How about this? Help the broker deal with... Oh, okay. Let's just do the star cross thing. So that means we need to go back to the uh, Emerald Emerald Vale. Okay. Uh, uh, so we go back to where we started. But that would be another part of... Uh, What's that? Terra 2? Yeah, Terra 2. Terra 1 is actually monarch and they were actually chased out by the animals. Very interesting. Uh, so that means we can just port directly to our spaceship and then uh, take a yeah, take a jump to Emerald Vale. Uh, Where do we park our ship? Right, the journal says we have to go back to Emerald Bay, to Edgewater. In Emerald Vale. Okay, uh, so that means yeah, we fly back to the unreliable, so that we don't have to go through town, and we skip one loading. We go directly to our spaceship. And I think we can go and uh, make sure that uh, we repair our equipment. Because we have been using the plasma rifle version 2. Because the more we use them, and uh, they actually become, what do you call this? Some crew members are causing a new... You're adjusting before you pop. You're anticipating. You... Of course I'm anticipating it. What if I shoot a friend on accident? That's on account of your stance. You want to lean into it. Embrace it. Work with it. You're in control here, Parvati. Not the gun. Don't let a hunk of metal jerk you around. You've been around powerful machinery all your life. You're always in control, right? Wow, we got so many stuff. Uh, repair. Uh, see, our plasma rifle has declined. Wow, 10 weapon parts. What is this? Oh, this is assault weapon. Okay. Uh, and this is the hunting rifle ultra. No. Okay. Uh, how about our armor? Uh, 53 to 53. No. No. Okay. Uh, so they're pretty good. 53 to 53. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I guess that's kind of like when the killer's shooting 600 
How about let's say if we want to break down items? Uh, well, these are the expensive yeah, stuff. We should go and okay, uh, keep these. Flamethrower. See, these are Mark Twos. Plasma Carbine. The Hammer of Olympus. And then on the armor side. You know what? I think the Hammer of Olympus, we can actually... Let's see if we can improve it. Uh, modify uh, Tinker. Oh, this is what? Uh, level 10. 35 to... How about this is? 50 to... From 243 to... Oh, this is a level 17. Well, this is a level... Ten. Wow, two hundred twenty-two assault rifle, hunting rifle. Wow, three fifty-three. No. Uh. <coughs> okay. Uh. No. Just an engineer using. Inventory, okay. Uh, let's let's drop it off. And then uh, drop off the extra items we picked up. No, uh, here armor. Yeah, we want the hack. We want the lock pick. Uh, we want a science and keep that. Uh, plasma damage and ray damage. Ooh, that's actually not bad. Lockpick, also, we already have one lockpick. Uh, stealth. Okay, let's hold on to that. Wow, all these stuff. Yeah, they weigh, they still weigh stuff. We should not accidentally uh, move Adreno because <laughs> we'll be uh, trying to heal ourselves and says, Oh, we don't have it anymore. Okay. Uh, oh, the jump. We need to sell the jump. Okay. What is this? Uh, do we get any more? What are these? Ooh. 
Let's face it. Adelaide's deserters dreamed of an independent life without board oversight. You thought that an important lesson never dreamed. Oh. You might want to consider changing your clothes more often. <laughs> okay, let's go to Edgewater. Back to Terra 2. Uh, Edgewater landing pad. We are now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain. Okay, uh, where are we supposed to go? Can we just go directly to that spot? That's Edgewater. See, okay, that's where we have to go, right? Uh, we can go directly to the geothermal power plant. What are these ones? River hideout, marauder encampment, transport wreckage, abandoned outpost, industrial zone uh so if we go directly we might encounter a nyoka yes we need to bring nyoka with us but we might land in the middle of a firefight uh that's okay i think <laughs> Or maybe we should have saved. Uh, whew. You can get temporary bonuses to your skills from consumables and wearing armor. This helps you pass skill checks. Oh, do we replace our our helmet? Because yeah, we had that hack before. Okay, uh, we have not improved our... What are those? Oh, I thought they were... It's interesting, these things did not respawn. Okay, uh... That's the closest area. Wait, uh, there is supposed to be a store behind us. Or a vendor behind us. Let's just check the Ah, uh, no, forget it. Isn't that a uh, Marauder outpost? I believe we came here before, maybe? seen <laughs> oh they never 
saw it. Oh, 1400. I'd wager this is the outpost. Rebecca! Anders! Come on out! There's still another red tick. Wow, we're getting very close to him. Yeah, we've been here before, okay. Uh, but where are the people we just killed? That's one. Can't remember where the other guy is. We killed two pooches. And a guy that was just right here, wasn't he? Tick again. The door's busted. Rebecca? Anders? You in there? Okay, I guess this would be a good place to cut the episode right here. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. I hope you'll join me in the next episode. Bye!